All right, hey YouTube, how's it going out there today? Uh, this time I'm going to go over Quicken 2017. Uh, the last video I went over how to install it. This time I'm going to go over some of the new features and what it looks like and just show you an overview of it. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. And here we go. So I've created a demonstration file just to show you some of the features here. But this is what the new Quicken looks like. Um, this is the home tab here. If you've used Quicken in the past, you'll be pretty familiar with this. The layout is similar to previous versions, um, but they've updated the look a little bit and made things a little bit easier to, uh, to view. Now I'm using the Quicken Home and Business version here. The Home and Business version includes a business tab here that you won't have if you're using Deluxe or Premier. Uh, it also has a property and debt tab that you won't have unless you set up a home or some other property or a mortgage. The investing tab only appears if you set up investment accounts such as a 401k and other retirement accounts or a brokerage account somewhere. So some of these tabs won't show up until you add the accounts that they apply to. Okay, so as we get on in here on the Home tab, this will show you all the spending that you've done in the last 30 days. It's the default view. Since this is a dummy account, it's not showing anything there. And then it will also show you the bills that you have each month, as well as your current budget, if you've set up your budget. Over here, it shows you all of the accounts that you've put in the system. I've got a checking account here and you click on it and you can see the check checking account register along with any bills that are due and as you synchronize transactions with your bank the downloaded transactions will show up right here I haven't set up that download yet so there's a button right here so I can set it up to synchronize with my bank if I click on the savings tab it shows me the history of this savings account my 401k account will show me the history there. It shows that in 2012 I bought S&P 500 ETF, 500 shares, and I don't have any other transactions in there. If you've set up the, uh, the home asset, it will let you track your home there and track your home's value. Now this is one of the newest features this year. Um, it actually synchronizes with Zillow if you would like it to so that it will always keep your home's current value up to date so you know exactly what your net worth is all the time so right here you can just click get started and it will it will start syncing up with Zillow after you set that up you can also uh, set up your mortgage right here and it will show you the history of that mortgage on your home um, beginning with your first payment how much you've paid off so far and when you'll finally finish paying it all off. So that's the accounts here. Down at the bottom it shows you your net worth currently and your current credit score and that gets updated every month or so. Now let's go across the top and look at these tabs here. On the home tab like I said this is the opening view. The spending tab will show you a little bit more detail about your spending and the default is for the last 30 days. You can change that here to, to show whichever interval you would like. So in the last 12 months, this is what my spending looked like. These were the categories that that broke down into. And then it shows you the actual transactions down here. Now on the bills tab, this is one of the newest features of Quicken also. You can actually set up your bills online with the merchants or vendors, and it will keep them updated in Quicken. So you can enter your power bill here with your power company. You can put in your mortgage, your auto loan, any other bills that you might have. You can set them up here and Quicken will keep them synced up with that person's or that business's website so that your bills are always up to date on what you owe and when they're due. It gives you the bill reminders tab here. Since this is a demo account, I have a lot of reminders of overdue bills, but this will show you what bills are coming up and which bills are overdue. And then it will take that billing information 
and project the balances of all your accounts based on your past spending habits and any bills that you have set up in here. So you can know exactly how much money you'll have a month from now um, or even 90 days from now or 12 months from now. Once again, that's only based on the bills that you have set up in the system in Quicken here and the bill reminders that you have set up and your spending habits. Now let's go to the planning tab. This is a great feature and one of the reasons why people get Quicken is for the budgeting feature. Now this is the, this is the first tab here under planning. This is where you can set up a budget and it will help you track how much you're spending and how much you are planning to spend. This debt reduction tool is also a nice one that will help you plan out how to pay off your debt faster. And you can play with different scenarios in here to uh, change the, the monthly amounts that you pay towards each debt and it will show you when those will be paid off. And then this lifetime planner is another great tool. You can put in some of the major life events that you're planning on in the future, such as purchasing a home, getting married, having children, purchasing a car, um, changing jobs, getting a raise, things like that. And it will help you plan out your financial future and explore different scenarios that might happen. The tax center is another nice one that helps you see how much you will owe in taxes, um, how much based on your salary and the taxes if you've set up your salary and your paycheck properly in here. And then you can also set up savings goals that will, where Quicken will help you save money and try to reach your goal. And this is a good way to set money aside for certain things like saving up for a car, saving for kids college, saving for a vacation, etc. The investing tab here will only appear after you have added some form of investment account. So you need to add an IRA or some other retirement account or a brokerage account of some sort before this tab will appear. After you add that, this tab will appear here. And this is a great tab if you invest. It will show you your whole por portfolio of investments right here on one page. You can use the portfolio x-ray tool, which will show you some of the weaknesses and strengths in your overall portfolio and give you different tips and, and pinpoint areas where you can improve. You can see your past performance over whichever interval you want to see. You can see how well your investments are doing. You can see the breakdown of how your investments are allocated between large cap, small cap, uh, REITs, international stocks, other classes of investments. And then this tax optimizer tab will give you tips on how to more efficiently invest and come up with strategies for how to allocate the different assets in your investment accounts. So this is another great tool if you're an investor. Now this property and debt tab that we'll go over next, that's another one that only appears if you have entered a property or mortgage or some sort of loan in this column over here. So until you add an asset account such as a home or a mortgage account or some kind of loan account, this tab will not appear. Once you put those in there, this tab will appear and it will show you your net worth. So right here over um, since I put in that I had a house beginning in 2010 along with the mortgage, this is showing the value of my net worth going up as I'm paying down that mortgage and as the value of the home is going up. The property tab will show you how much your house is currently worth and how much you owe on it. And then the debt tab will show you how much you've paid down of all your debts everything over here that you have listed as a loan or debt. And then this business tab is another one. This one only appears in the home and business version of Quicken. So if you have that version, this is great for anyone who owns a small business, a home-based business, a sole proprietorship. This is a great way and Quicken provides the tools to track your expenses so you can separate your business expenses and income from your other expenses and income. 
So this tab shows you all that. And there are a lot of great business tools and reports that you can use. You can create invoices and estimates. You can track miles. You can, um, you can do reports such as profit and loss right here. Um, payroll. Um, you can create your Schedule C for when you file your taxes. Look at a current balance sheet. You can set up accounts payable and receivable. So this is a very powerful tool for a small or, or a home-based business or people with side businesses. And then add-on services. This is just a few other things that you can add to Quicken if you want to. You can add Quicken Bill Pay, which is where Quicken will pay your bills for you automatically each month. You can have an online backup so that you make sure you never lose any of your data. Um, there's a social security optimizer that lets you figure out if you're getting social security, um, what your benefits are or what you can do to make a difference in that income. And then this is an identity theft protection application that you can add on. The mobile and alerts tab, this is where you, if you choose to use the mobile application on your iPhone or Android device, this is where you go to set it up. You click on get started and it will walk you through the steps to sync up your mobile device with your desktop version of Quicken. So then you can see all your transactions on your mobile phone or mobile device. You can enter transactions. You can see your investments and your current investments values. And you can take pictures of receipts as you're on the go. And one of the great improvements to the mobile app this year is that it works offline also. So even if you're in a place where you're not connected to Wi-Fi or to your cellular network, you can still use the mobile app to enter transactions. And then there's a tips and tutorials tab there that will show different tips on how to use Quicken. Uh, so that in a nutshell is an overview of the newest version of Quicken, Quicken 2017. Stay tuned for the next videos where I will show you some more detail on some of these features such as how to set up a checking account, how to set up a 401k account, how to set up an asset such as a home, how to set up a loan such as a mortgage or auto loan, and how to track some of your investments. So take care all.